Welcome to Shipwreck Sunday, where we investigate disasters at sea and the impact that they have on the world today. My name is Eleanor. Today we will be discussing the sinking of SS Cap Arcona, a Nazi prison ship that sank in World War II. Before we dive in, I must inform you. The story does include details of a maritime disaster resulting in the loss of a vessel, Nazism, wartime violence, suicide, the Holocaust, and death that may be disturbing to some audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Please note before we begin that I am not a mariner or expert in the field of maritime history, but I have done my research and will present the information as I understand it and with accurate nautical terminology. In today's episode, I will be including the basics of nautical terminology in the description for anyone who needs it. I will also be covering some terms in German, a language that I do not speak. I will do my best to give accurate pronunciations. Well everyone, we've come to an interesting point on Shipwreck Sunday. We have gotten to the point where we have explored so many wrecks, some of our ships going forward overlap with other stories we've already covered. I'd like to take a moment to thank everyone for your support. This podcast has truly been my pride and joy over these past five months, and I'm so proud of how far we've come. Thank you for continuing to listen and support us. And now on to SS Cap Arcona, the Nazi prison ship. If you remember our previous episode on MV Wilhelm Gustloff, you might recall me telling you that the Nazis made their own movie explaining the Titanic disaster and had an ocean liner standing in as the Titanic. SS Cap Arcona is that ocean liner. However, that is far later in her career. Before World War II broke out and she was requisitioned for the Kriegsmarine in 1940, Cap Arcona was a passenger liner running the Hamburg, Germany to Buenos Aires, Argentina route. In yard number 476 of the Blom and Voss shipyard in Hamburg, Germany, the keel of SS Capricona was laid down on July 21, 1926. She would be launched on May 14, 1927, being completed and finishing her sea trials shortly after that. The ocean liner was 675 feet and 6 inches long, had a beam of 84 feet and 7 inches wide, and a draft of 46 feet and 11 inches. She displaced 27,561 gross registered tons, being driven by eight steam turbines, single reduction geared to two propellers. The ship had three smokestacks painted white with red tops, and the body of the ship being painted black on her hull with a white superstructure and red below the waterline. SS Capricona was between the more Art Deco modern era of ocean liners and the classic ocean liners of the Edwardian period. She had 26 lifeboats that were primarily mounted in two tiers across the boat deck and state-of-the-art modern navigation and communication equipment. She was also equipped with acoustic signaling in order to detect submarines and aid in navigation, as well as wireless direction finding equipment. After 1934, she was equipped with an echo sounding device and gyro compass. You might be asking yourself, what's a gyro compass? A gyro compass is a non-magnetic compass that is based upon a fast spinning disc in the device and the rotation of the earth to determine geographical direction automatically. There's not much to say about SS Capricona's peacetime passenger service. Her maiden voyage was October 29, 1927 from Hamburg to Buenos Aires, joining another ship in her company by the name of Cap Polonio. She was operated by a company by the name of Hamburg Südamerikanische, or Hamburg Süd for short and replaced Cap Polonio as the flagship for the company. Cap Polonio was then laid up in 1931, being scrapped later in 1935, and leaving Cap Arcona as the only prestige liner on the South American route that Hamburg Zood had. Her only incident of note was on October 6, 1932, when SS Cap Arcona collided with a French cargo ship, Agen, in the North Sea near the LB-4 lightship. SS Cap Arcona was able to be repaired, with Agen being beached and later refloated and taken to Hamburg, Germany for her own repairs. As many of us know, Germany invaded Poland September 1, 1939, and started World War II, the deadliest war in human history. It is estimated between 70 and 85 million people were casualties of World War II. In 1940, the Kriegsmarine, or the German Navy, requisitioned SS Cap Arcona, painting her navy gray. She was originally used as an accommodation ship in the Baltic Sea off of Gotenhafen, which is modern-day Jedynia, Poland. An accommodation ship, or barracks ship, is a ship that is docked and used as a temporary barracks for sailors and other military personnel. There, she would run into MV Wilhelm Gustloff, who was used for similar purposes. In 1942, Cap Arcona was infamously used as a stand-in for the RMS Titanic when the Nazis made a film recreation of the sinking. This was filmed in the harbor of Gotenhafen, and the film was, of course, done in poor taste. It was commissioned by Nazi propaganda minister Joseph Goebbels, intending to not only display German filmmaking superiority, but also as propaganda film to depict American and British capitalism as the main reason behind the sinking of Titanic. 
As the rest of us all know, the real reason behind the sinking of Titanic was a tragic, accidental striking of an iceberg. However, the Nazis intended to use the film, released on November 10th of 1943 and displayed on screens across Nazi-occupied Europe, to turn the public against the Allies. The first director, Herbert Selpin, got arrested during the production of the film for making disparaging comments about Kriegsmarine sailors, but the production was still completed. These comments, as you might have guessed, got the director in hot water, and he was later interrogated by Joseph Goebbels. The interrogation was a disaster and self-destructive, and guaranteed an execution. Herbert Selpin was found the next day in his cell, hanging by his suspenders. This is yet another vessel that unfortunately gained a nickname of the blank Titanic, filling in the blank with whatever adjective seems to sum up the vessel's story. In this case, it is the Nazi Titanic. Again, dear listeners, please heed my call to action and stop calling SS Capricona the Nazi Titanic. Not only does it take away from the Titanic disaster's victims, but it nullifies the pain and suffering the victims of SS Capricona felt. The Nazis did horrible things and hurt many people, and they did make a film about the Titanic sinking aboard SS Capricona, but this does not justify the ignorant nickname. In 1945, Nazi Germany had to start facing the writing on the wall. They were losing the war, and their invasion of Russia had failed spectacularly. On January 31st, 1945, the Kriegsmarine reactivated SS Capricona for an evacuation operation of East Prussia called Operation Hannibal. And yes, this is the same Operation Hannibal that M.V. Wilhelm Gustloff took part in. M.V. Wilhelm Gustloff and SS Capricona, along with other ships, were gathered to evacuate terrified German civilians, prisoners of war, and Nazi personnel out of Nazi-occupied Poland, Estonia, and other surrounding countries of what was then East Prussia, to the safety of Western Germany. SS Capricona would be used to transport 25,795 German soldiers and civilians safely through the mine and Soviet Navy submarine-infested waters of the Baltic Sea. On January 30th of 1945, MV Wilhelm Gustloff set off with around 10,000 people toward Germany, being torpedoed by Soviet submarine S-13. The cruise ship sank in roughly 40 minutes, taking around 9,400 people to the bottom of the Baltic Sea with her. In the early morning hours of February 11th that year, S-13 struck again and torpedoed the SS General von Steuben. This ocean liner was on its way to Copenhagen, carrying wounded and bedridden soldiers and civilian passengers, and over 4,000 people died when she was sunk. Because of the high risk of sinking in the Baltic and facing having to make another evacuation run, on February 20th, nine days after the General von Steuben sank, Captain Johannes Gertz of the Cap Arcona shot himself in his cabin while berthed in Copenhagen. This didn't stop the Nazis from continuing to use SS Cap Arcona. During March and April of 1945, concentration camp prisoners from Scandinavian countries were transported from all over German-occupied Europe to the Neuengamme concentration camp near Hamburg, Germany, as part of the White Bus Program. The White Bus Program was an operation sponsored by the Swedish Red Cross and Danish government in the spring of 1945 to rescue concentration camp inmates in areas under Nazi control to transport them to the neutral country of Sweden. Prisoners of other nationalities were displaced in order to make room for the Scandinavian group. Heinrich Himmler, one of the most powerful men within the Nazi party and a key architect of the Holocaust, eventually agreed that the Scandinavians and a select few others were viewed as less harmful to Germany and could be transported through Denmark to the safety of Sweden. Between April 16th and 28th of 1945, Nuengame was emptied of all its remaining prisoners, together with groups of concentration camp inmates and Soviet POWs from other camps. The intent was to move them to yet another camp that was secret and would be either at Meissen in Norway or on the Baltic island of Fermarn. Here, they would be guarded by concentration camp guards that were evacuated from Sachsenhausen, a concentration camp in Oranienburg, Germany. Until they were ready to be moved, they were to be hidden from the British and Canadian forces working their way through the concentration camps and liberating prisoners. This is where SS Kopperkona comes in and is used as a prison ship. The Schutzstaffel, or SS as we refer to them as, were a paramilitary operation under Hitler's Nazi Germany. The SS assembled a prison flotilla, or a fleet of boats or ships, of decommissioned ships and liners in the Bay of Lübeck in the southwestern Baltic Sea. This flotilla consisted of the ocean liners SS Kaparkona and Hapag's SS Deutschland, the motor launch Athen, 
and the freighter steamship Thielbeck. The turbines were out of use on SS Capacorna, and the steering motors were out of commission on Thielbeck, so Athen was used to transport prisoners from Lubeck to the larger ships as well as between prison ships. The prisoners who unfortunately found themselves on these ships were denied food, water, and medical attention, and were locked up below decks and in the cargo holds, oftentimes too many of them in each cell and in horrific conditions. On April 30th, 1945, the previously two used support vessels for the white bus evacuations, Swedish ships Magdalena and Lily Mathewson, made their final trip to loop back and back. Among the prisoners rescued were some transferred off of ships in the prison flotilla, including SS Capricona. On the evening of May 2nd, more prisoners, mainly women and children from the Mitzelbau, Dora, and Stutthof concentration camps, were loaded onto barges and transferred to the anchored prison flotilla. However, the Cap Arcona refused to accept more prisoners, and this led to over 800 prisoners being returned to the beach at Neustadt on May 3rd early in the morning, around 500 being gunned down by machine guns on their barges or being beaten to death on the beach. The reason behind these disgusting, heinous killings were that their SS guards wanted an easy, unencumbered escape. It was a truly horrifying act and quite sad. By early May of 1945, any pipe dreams of relocation were squashed by the rapid advance of the British military toward the Baltic. The SS leadership, seeing no other option, discussed scuttling the ships with the prisoners still aboard. For anyone unfamiliar with the term, scuttling is the act of sinking one's own vessel with explosives to either avoid it being captured by the enemy or for a myriad of other purposes. On May 2nd, 1945, the British 2nd Army discovered the camp at Newton to be empty and quickly reached the towns of Wismar and Lubeck. Lubeck had a permanent Red Cross office acting as a Red Cross port, and there was a man working there by the name of Mr. D. Boulonnais. He informed Major General Roberts of the 11th Armored Division that there were 7,000 to 8,000 prisoners aboard the flotilla in the Bay of Lubeck. In the afternoon of May 3rd, the British 5th Reconnaissance Regiment found their way to Neustadt and witnessed the flotilla burning in the bay. They rescued emaciated prisoners who washed up on shore, but mostly found the bodies of women and children who were murdered that morning, staining the sand crimson. Let's back it up to what happened. May 3rd, 1945 was three days after Adolf Hitler had committed suicide, and was the day before the unconditional surrender of the German troops in northwestern Germany at Lunenburg Heath to Field Marshal Montgomery. Thielbeck, Capricona, and Deutschland were attacked as part of general strikes on shipping in the Baltic Sea. This was done by the Royal Air Force Hawker Typhoons of 83 Group of the 2nd Tactical Air Force. Through ultra-intelligence, the Western Allies were aware that most of the SS leadership and former concentration camp commandants had fled to Flensburg with Heinrich Himmler, hoping to escape into Norway. Orders from the Rump Donitz government in Flensburg that the SS leadership were to avoid Allied capture or to be issued false naval uniforms to conceal their identities were intercepted by the Western Allies. Donitz claimed to maintain the lie that his administration was free from involvement in the concentration camps or in Hitler's planned genocide while surrendering to the Allies. So, assuming these ships may be part of that escape plan and not knowing they contained innocent prisoners from concentration camps, the Royal Air Force deployed their fighters and bombers for the Bay of Lubeck. None of the prison flotilla were Red Cross marked, therefore it was legal to sink them according to the laws of naval warfare. The prisoners were also concealed below decks, and so the pilots never knew who they were really bombing. Swiss and Swedish Red Cross officials had informed British intelligence on May 2nd that there were concentration camp prisoners on ships anchored in the Bay of Lubeck, but unfortunately this information did not get passed on. And so, assuming the occupants of the prison flotilla were Nazis and SS, the Royal Air Force swooped in. On board SS Capricona, there were life jackets stored in locker compartments, and SS guards managed to jump overboard wearing them. German trawlers, or fishing boats used for trawling, picked up 16 sailors, 400 SS men, and 20 SS women from the Baltic Sea. On the Thielbeck, only 50 of the 2,800 prisoners were saved, and all 2,000 prisoners on the Deutschland were safely evacuated to Athen before it capsized. Of the 5,000 concentration camp victims aboard SS Capricona, only 350 of them survived. The prisoners were of at least 30 known nationalities, American, Belarusian, Belgian, Canadian, Czechoslovakian, Danish, Dutch, Estonian, Finnish, French, German, Greek, Hungarian, Italian, Latvian, Lithuanian, Luxembourger, Norwegian, Polish, Romanian, Russian, Serbian, Spanish, Swiss, Ukrainian, and the possibility of many other nationalities. Recalling the horror of the deed, RAF pilot Alan Weiss recalled, quote, we used our cannon at the chaps in the water. 
We shot them up with 20 millimeter cannons in the water. Horrible thing, but we were told to do it and we did it. That's war. While this was happening, SS Capricona was severely damaged and on fire. Eventually, the ship capsized. The emaciated and seriously malnourished survivors were swimming in the icy Baltic Sea that temped around 44 degrees Fahrenheit. On May 4, 1945, Thielbeck and Capricona were photographed. Later, SS Capricona washed up on the beach of Neustadt, breaking up in 1949. For weeks after the attack, bodies washed up on the shores of the Bay of Lübeck. They were collected and buried in mass graves at Neustadt and Holstein, Timmendorfer Strand, and Scharboots. As if this wasn't horrifying enough, partial skeletons washed up on the shore for the next 30 years. The last one was recovered in 1971. At the War Crimes Tribunal, Geiliter Karl Kaufmann claimed that the prisoners were never intended to be moved to Sweden since the ships were not marked with any Red Cross markings and were quote, not seaworthy. Though these claims are flimsy at best. George Henning Graf von Bissowitz Bear, Hamburg's last higher SS and police leader, testified at this trial that the prisoners were to be killed, quote, in compliance with Heinrich Himmler's orders. Kurt Rickert worked for Bassowitz Bear and he claimed that he thought the ships were to be sunk by either Luftwaffe aircraft or U boats. Eva Neurath was present on the beaches in Neustadt and her husband actually survived the disaster. She claimed that a police officer told her that the ships held convicts and were going to be blown sky high. So it doesn't look good for the Nazis. They never intended to free any of these concentration camp victims and even further defamed them. It is already heartbreaking that very few of these innocent people who were already tortured and left for dead were killed due to miscommunication and misunderstanding intelligence. World War II displayed a lot of ugliness that people are able to perpetuate on one another, and unfortunately the sinking of SS Capricona and the rest of the prison flotilla in the Blay of Lubeck was no exception. This episode hopes to honor those who've perished not only in the attack on the prison flotilla ships, but all of the victims of the Holocaust. It is important for humanity to remember these tragedies so we do not repeat them. If you would like to support Holocaust survivors and their families, please visit bluecardfund.org to donate to the Blue Card, a foundation determined to help survivors of the Holocaust since 1934. Thank you for tuning in to Shipwreck Sunday. If you liked this episode and are listening on YouTube, please give us a like, leave us a comment, and subscribe to our channel. If you like this episode and are listening on Spotify, Samsung Podcasts, Amazon Music, or another podcast service, please subscribe for more content and leave us a five-star review as it does help us reach more listeners like you. Check out Speed Force Media on Twitter. Our Twitter handle is at Shipwreck Sunday. Tune in next Sunday for the story of MS Explorer, a cruise ship that sank due to an iceberg. Have a great week and we'll see you next time.